and welcome back to Home Built Help's Tip of the Week. This week we talk about the fabric of our aircraft. If you have a fabric covered aircraft, it's very important to fully understand the system that you are using for covering and painting. This week we take a look at Stuart Systems water-based fabric covering system. First we're going to look at a few tips and techniques and then it will be followed by an explanation of the system itself by the instructor. Take a look. The tape is going to overhang to about this point. So when we put our glue on, we want it go ahead and get the glue to this point. Yeah. So what I do is that I just use my finger as a gauge, the woodworking trick, set my line where I want to do it, and then I just go ahead and draw that line, nice and straight all the way around. And it'll follow the curve just as well. This will do two things. This will, the glue will leach through the fabric, and lock it to the frame, and it'll also give us the glue on the surface that will help us to put on the perimeter tapes, which is done in a later step. And this is kind of cool. There's our glue cup. You glue that on. You put your glue in here. You can work all day long. We keep it covered with a wet paper towel. Your glue will be good all day long at the end of the day. You pull this out, throw it away. You have your holder for the next day. That will not fall off your wing. You can't spill it. It, makes, it keeps you from making a big mess, because I make big messes. So take the glue, and now what you're going to do is just all the way around like you did before. Go ahead and bring this in. Do about six to eight inches at a time. And then go ahead and take the blue paper towel, and then just wipe once. And that locks it in, that presses it in and cleans up any gloppiness. This is really important when we get on a final tape. Yeah. This is going to be covered. When you cut fabric, one of the biggest difficulties you get. We'll go ahead and cut this. I, I won't know until I actually see it in, in some areas of DC. Uh, is you get this feathering. And that's really a problem when you're working with the fabric. So to avoid that, what you can do is take glue, mix it 50% glue, 50% water. So it becomes this really, really thin wash. When you know where you're going to be cutting, before you do any cutting, you go ahead and just wipe this in. Very lightly like that. And then grab a paper towel and just wipe this off. Okay. If you're getting on the table, just wipe it loose. And then you let that dry. Once that's dry and you cut it, there won't be any feathers. So before, when I pulled on this, we get this feathery stuff a lot. Once I put that thin 50-50 mix of the glue and water on here, and go ahead and cut across here, now when I pull on this, there's no feathering. So well, that works really good. So if you know where you're going to cut, thin the glue out 50-50, 50% water, 50% glue, real light on there where you're going to cut, let it set for about 10 minutes, and then when you cut it, you have a nice locked in, you don't get the feathery edge. That's a real, that's real helpful. So we use to calibrate the irons. So although the irons do have a temperature gauge on here, you really want to make sure that the gauge is accurate. Place this on here, and you'll see the needle will move. It'll tell you exactly where the temperature is. Some of the irons don't have a temperature gauge on them. The monocoat iron it doesn't have a temperature gauge. So what you have to do is calibrate your iron and make sure you know where is 250, where is 300, where is 350. All the way to high on this is about 450 degrees, which will damage your fabric. Over 350, you lose the tightness of the fabric, it becomes loose again, and it's no longer airworthy. So you have to make sure you've got these things calibrated. So this was saying, this is set at about 275. So when we leave that on there, we'll see if that'll come up. So even though you've got a gauge on here, you still want to check your iron and make sure that your iron is really giving the temperature that it says it is. So the Stuart sells those? Or yeah, okay. Stuart sells these, yeah. So it's just real simple. This is real similar to what is inside of a uh, heating, uh, the thermometer or thermostat that's on a wood stove. But that works. Yep, Stuart has those in the catalog. So I'll come around and tell you what the temperature is. 
So when you've got glue on something, you need to get it off, whether it's on a table or on a tube or whatever, you got some blockages, we use these. What this is, is the long gummy racer that's used to clean off the belt sander. We cut these on a bandsaw into pieces. And then this is used anytime you want to remove a glob. So if I've got a glob on here, let's say I've got something, something thick on here that I don't like that's going to leave a bump. I can take this and I can use that and it'll help remove that gloppiness. So just a gummy racer and it'll pull that, anything that's thick, it'll pull it right off the surface. So that works really good. Like we've got a big, yeah, a little bit of bump there. And that'll disappear. Well, I hope what you've seen with some of the work we've done, how the Stewart system works, how it covers panels and so forth. Big issue we're dealing with here, this is a waterborne system. We don't use any MEK, we don't have any nasty chemicals. You can do this in the house, you can do this in the garage, you can do this with your kids, your grandkids, you can do this in a classroom. That's the beauty of this. No toxicity, no issues. The other systems are great. They've been around for 30 years. There's nothing wrong with them. Problem is, in a state like I live in California, MEK and other solvents are going to be banned very quickly. When you can use water as a solvent, it just eliminates all the issues. It just really is a safe system. I really like working with it. I get kind of tired doing this sometimes. It gets kind of hot. I need a drink of water. I need my paint thinner. Um, I need a little, I'm gonna drink some, hang on, I'm gonna drink some paint thinner. It's always good to bring a little paint thinner. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, this is our paint thinner. This is water. This is what we really use. I know it's kind of tongue-in-cheek, kind of silly, but we use mineral water for all of our thinning of our paint. You do this at home, there's no smell. So when you're all done, drink up. Nice thing about Stewart Systems is it's a fully SDC product. It's fully certified. Um, it can go on any rag and tube aircraft. It can go, of course, on any experimental aircraft. So it's completely certified. The system is also the only system that is certified to repair all the other systems. So regardless of what fabric system is on your airplane, Stewart system can be used to repair it. If you've got one of the other systems, you have to repair it with their system. If you don't know what system that is, if it's not in a logbook, the only repair you can legally make is with the Stewart systems. And it's just real simple to do. Again, it's using all the waterborne products. So it really is for an IA, for A&P, for a you only have to have one system sitting on the shelf. Any tube and fabric aircraft that comes in needs repair, you can use the Stewart system to make that repair. So that makes it really handy for the guy who's doing the job every day out in the hangar. Um, I'm building a Wagero 2 plus 2. It's a tube and fabric airplane. I started working with this about four years ago. Um, I've got a website with a builder's log because the 2 plus 2 does not have a builder's manual. So my website is marty2plus2.com, spell out the word plus. And I've got everything on there for building the airplane, all the drawings for building the airplane. It's all there. Um, I'm an EA member. My idea is paying this forward. I've gotten so much help from other EA guys, so much help from guys on supercub.org that I just want to continue bringing this forward because it's a great system. It's old school home building, and I really like working with it. And a special thanks to our financial supporters that keep these tips coming. We look forward to seeing you next time.